bam, and just like that, we set up our MySQL database. We got our data from Python in the database and we're able to read from the tables. Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Gibbs Bags, and today I'm gonna show you how to get your pandas data frame in Python inside of a MySQL database. This is gonna be three easy steps. We're gonna first download and install MySQL. We're gonna do our config and set up our database, and then we're gonna go ahead and get our Python data inside. So first thing you wanna do is pop open your trusty Google and put on your seatbelt because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. All right, MySQL download, go ahead pop in there we have the mysql website we just want to go to community server here so then we have our go to download page i'm running windows here so we're going to go in here and then it's going to have our installer we'll just click on right up and through there and then no thanks we're just going to start our download so you can go ahead and start your download just save that to wherever you got to go click into it and then it's going to start the download installer so once that's downloaded, just go ahead, click in there, get started. So we're at our first window of the installer here. We're just gonna click developer default. If it's your first time, you might not see this page, but I'm just gonna click through this. If you've never installed it, you won't usually go through this path conflicts here, and then we can just go ahead and download these. So it's gonna start running this download. If some of these downloads don't work, you just click try again. We're definitely gonna need this Python connector here. And now that everything's successfully downloaded, we just click to next, and then we start installing. All right, so now everything's finished up. I'm gonna click next here, and then we're gonna start configuring. So I'm gonna just proceed with everything standard as it comes. Now, here's where you might run into some problems if you're using Anaconda. So if you're using Anaconda, this password encryption might not work for you. Now, I'm gonna proceed with this legacy authentication. Now, they say that there's severe security issues if you use this, so please, just use your password encryption this option if you're going to set up like some commercial stuff but for the purpose of this video and just to keep everything moving just going to use this legacy authentication now it's going to bring you to a root account that you're going to create a password for so this is like your master account so go ahead and create a password for it when you create a password you can use a different password than the password to get into your computer and you should use a different password than the password to get into your computer because you're setting up a user for your MySQL. You can go ahead and press check and then move on to next. I'm just gonna leave everything as it is on this page and click through it and then press execute here. All right, so then it does all this configuration for us and we're gonna click finish. Next, MySQL router, I'm not gonna click anything here. I just click straight through that, no configuration needed. I just clicked right through to here and we're gonna enter our password from before. You enter in the same password for the user that you just created and you create the connection here and then you can click next. Then we're just gonna click execute here. It's gonna do some more config and we just clicked execute and then it ran this configuration here and we're just gonna click finish. And it looks like everything's finished here. Then we're gonna click next and we're gonna go ahead and start the SQL workbench and then the shell. We don't really need this shell, so we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of that there. So this is the MySQL workbench. Here's our connection. I'm gonna go in here and just manage this connection here. I'm gonna just delete it because we're gonna create our own connection. But let's close this window out. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a connection here. Let's use first connection as the name of our connection, I know really awesome right and then it's going to ask us to enter in our root password and then we have a successful connection here and then you can go ahead and click in here so if you double click your connection then it's going to bring you inside of this tab here and we have our schemas here it might bring you to this uh, administration tab here and then this is where you can like set up a new user so if you wanted to create a new user you could just go here press add account and then enter your username and a password and change any of these um, settings that you'd like then from our connection tab here we're just gonna click into schemas so we can see a couple of different databases here we have a couple sample databases and then we have our systems database here but what we're gonna want to do is create database called test DB and then we're gonna go ahead and run that we'll refresh our schemas and then we'll see that we have here created a database called test db up next what we want to do is flip over to our anaconda navigator i'm going to click into environments here and then go into base and then open a terminal so once we have our terminal here we just want to pip install sql alchemy you can read it in the docs or check it out in a previous video here to get the sql alchemy docs just google search sql alchemy docs here we're going to click right in so if you click into the overview here you can 
C or pip install command. And then also very important, you wanna pip install my SQL client here. This is gonna help communicate Python and SQL. I've already have it installed, so we're pretty much good to go here. I'll go back to our home and then we'll launch our spider. So all the code from this video can be found on my GitHub. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can follow along. Awesome. So let's go ahead and kind of work through the script here. Here's the links to get the downloads. And then here are the pip installs that you should have in line. And then first we're going to import our modules. So here we just have a SQL Alchemy and then also a couple of different modules from SQL Alchemy. All right, up first we can run our imports and then we can go ahead and check out what version we have. Make sure our pip install worked correctly and our import statement worked correctly. Everything looks good here. All Alright, so this block of code here, we're just going to be setting up a pandas data frame. We've got some stock symbols, we've got some dates, we got some prices, and then we're just going to create a data frame using all of that. And then you can see here's our data frame. So we're going to be looking to put this inside of our MySQL database. Now these five lines are going to be information from our configuration. So you would put your root here, you would put your password here, and then you're going to put your host number here. This is just the standard one that was there when we did the configuration and our port number this is again a standard port now when we did our create database test db this is going to be our test db name no caps no cap fam and then we just made up a name for our table which we haven't created yet that's going to be called table name now moving right along we have our create engine command here and then i'm going to break it down where you can find all this information in the docs right here so here's our tutorial from the docs now if you click into establishing connectivity it's going to bring you to this page and then here's our import and then also we have our create engine command now what's different about ours is this inside the quotes is different. So here's SQLite using the PySQLite DB API, and then it's creating a database in memory. We're going to do something completely different. So what we're going to go here is just search MySQL. Oh, fuck no. We're not going to do that. How about that? Okay, so what we're going to do to find the correct information to put here, let's just go to the home for the documentation, and then we're going to go scroll down a little bit to dialect documentation, and then go to MySQL. And then we can see the different db api that it supports now we're using my sql client so we're going to click into there and then this is going to give us the breakdown of exactly what we need to put inside of our connection so you can basically copy that out you'll see that here we have the same deal mysql db and then we have our user so this is an f string here so it's going to put our user in here and then it's going to put our password separated by a colon then we have an at sign then we have our host number separated by a colon we have our port number and then there's a slash and then there's our database name and then this is going to create the engine object that connects to our mysql db called test db so let's try it out so i'm going to just go ahead and run this and yes i chose a better path password then password. So here's our engine object. You can see that it worked. Now we're basically ready to put our data into our database. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our data frame dot to SQL. So here in this command, we have the name of our table and that's going to be the variable table name, which is the string table name, all lowercase. Next, we have our connection. We're going to use our engine object to connect. And then if the table exists, we're just going to go ahead and replace it. So I'm going to go ahead and run that code. So so you can read all the output here and then let's go to our MySQL workbench to see what happened. So I'm going to just refresh here and then I'm going to open up our test database and see if there's a table that we created. And voila, here is our table, table name, and then we can even see all of the different columns. So in SQL Alchemy, if you use engine.connect, it has automatic rollback. So if you don't commit your transaction, it won't make changes to the database. So these next couple queries, they don't really make changes. We're just kind of reading data. But later when we make changes like dropping a table, we'll use engine.begin to do that. Now this block of code here, what it does is just gets all of our column names. So we ran that here, it describes our table and it gives us our column names and our data types. So now in this next block of code, we're able to know what are our column names. And so we're just gonna select all of the rows from our table and then we're gonna print out all of the rows of data. 
So as you can see here, this is a row, this is a row, and you can also see that it's automatically rolled back, but we haven't made any changes, but we still get that auto rollback. So now we're gonna perform some operations. We're just gonna drop the table. If we go ahead and run that, you can see that it drops the table and then it commits the transaction. So if we go back to our MySQL workbench, I'm gonna press refresh, and then we're gonna see that there are no tables. Next, we're just gonna drop the database so went ahead, ran that. We're gonna pop back over to our MySQL workbench and then we're just gonna refresh and then bang, our database is gone. Bam, and just like that, we set up our MySQL database. We got our data from Python in the database and we're able to read from the tables. And then we took all the tables out and destroyed the database. I know, I make it look easy, right? Please be mindful of the security concerns because you don't wanna get hacked. And if you like the content, let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. We love to have you here at the finance family. Be safe out there, family. You have my blessing. Let's go get these bags.